Welcome one, welcome all, and especially those of you who are here for the first time. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, October 24th. Now, every day I share my due diligence with you. I'm a day trader. I am trading every day, all day, and I trade primarily penny stocks, stocks under five bucks, and that's what I do. I scour the markets, every market, for stocks under five bucks that have the potential to make us money. Now, the way I find these hot stocks is not going through the press releases and the filings. I'm going to look at them, but after I find a hot chart. I think a hot chart is much more important than hot news. I'll find a piece of hot news and match it to a hot chart, and then I'll have a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you on a regular basis. And I've got some of those for you right now. But first, I want to talk about some stocks that we're not going to look at. <laughs> That is to say, I've got some leftover due diligence. I've got some hot charts here. I haven't done any due diligence on them, but the charts look good to me. And I just want to share them with you now before tomorrow. You can do some due diligence. You may find a hot penny stock. Let me show you what I found. What we're doing is looking at five charts that have heat. I did all my DD for the stocks I'm going to share with you, had some extra time, and I just started browsing charts. I really do like to do that. And I got five here that have heat. Now, I haven't done any due diligence on these. I'm going to leave that up to you, but I'm giving them to you in time before tomorrow. All five of these charts are atypical breakout charts. Now, don't go looking that up on Google. You're not going to find any information. I made that name up. We talk about that chart setup so often, it just made sense to give it a name so you'd know what I was talking about just like that. What is an atypical breakout chart? Well, simply put, it's when the 200-day SMA is falling fast and furious like a ski slope. And then down here, it starts to level off into the parking lot. You got the price deep under the 200, falling with it. And then down here, they start to get close. And the price looks like it wants to cut through that 200. That is an atypical breakout chart. And that's what we're looking at right here. A really nice one, as a matter of fact. Another term I use is directional intentional spike right here. This is the most important feature I am looking for on an atypical breakout chart. I am looking for it to be underneath all of the SMAs, shoot through every single SMA, including the 200, but doing that with a wick. And I want that wick to go as high as it can possibly go because that wick has a little string attached to it, attached to the 200-day SMA. The higher it goes, the more it pulls that 200 up. Then I don't mind it falling back down as long as it doesn't fall any lower than where it started. This one didn't. It came down and it fell right here. She then got on top of her nine-day SMA and she's pushing up towards the 200. There is your atypical breakout chart. By the way, that was MNSEF, but I think I've got some words up there for you. Another one, a typical breakout chart. This is NB, Neocore Developments. Now, we are looking at four-hour charts. That's how I find heat. Again, another atypical breakout chart. Now, what's unique about this one is that the 200-day SMA just came into the picture. Before that, all we had was the 50-day SMA, limited information. And the price hung around the 50 until the 200 came in. And then she started pushing up over the 50, getting curious. And right now she's readjusting herself to the 200-day SMA, which has more data. And she's getting some momentum. She could continue. Next one we got here is SOPH, Sophia Genetics. I guess you could call this an atypical breakout chart. And there's no explanation needed. She crossed all of her SMAs, has been climbing, has approached the 200, and she's breaking out. All of our SMAs look beautiful on this one. Fourth one, LGHL, Lion Group Holdings. This, too, is an atypical breakout chart. We've got some serious jumps and bumps on this chart. Now, it doesn't look very hot, so let's get closer. This is just starting. She has come through all of her SMAs, and what really drew my attention to this chart was on the long picture, you can see that this 50-day SMA is falling. There isn't a level spot anywhere, but look right now. 
it has gone completely flat for quite a while and is now starting to turn up. Same thing with our 200 haul. It was falling and just now has gone flat and is starting to turn up with the price climbing and volume coming in. That looks like it has a lot of potential. Last one. This is ticker NDVAF, another atypical breakout chart that needs very little explanation. She's worked her way over to the 200, did not have that directional intentional spike. I wish she would have, but she did tag it, came back down to the 50, jumped up. Now, when I don't see a wick and she does break out, what I usually expect her to do is jump up and down on top of it. She just wants to make sure it's strong before she goes on. And that's what I see here. One big hard bang down. She's starting to bounce up. I would expect a few more little bounces and then hopefully a takeoff. So those are five hot charts that you need to do the due diligence on. Now let's take a look at the stocks that I've done the due diligence on. First hot penny stock I want to share with you is ticker OZSC, OZOP Energy Solutions. Now her chart, it's not hot. She had a huge fall and some of the fall I completely understand, but a lot of it I don't. Well, she had some big news come out today and she is starting to climb up. It looks like an opportunity to me. So OZSC, she finished the day at 00265 with 6% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's only got one of those green ticks we're always talking about, the transfer agent verified, which is good. Glad to see it there. But I would like to see a verified profile. Now, why these are so important to me is that they're validated information. And when you're trading pinks, you don't have any validated information. You have to take the management's word on everything. So any validated information we get, I feel good about. That's why I always like to see them there. So what is Ozop Energy Solutions about? They give us a pretty decent description here, but they give us a better one in the news press. They've got four divisions and they break those divisions down for us here. Ozop Energy Solutions invents, designs, develops, manufactures, and distributes ultra high power chargers, inverters, and power supplies for a wide variety of applications in the defense, heavy industrial, aircraft ground support, maritime, and other sectors. Their OZOP Energy Systems Division is a manufacturer and distributor of renewable energy products in the energy storage, solar, microgrids, and EV charging station space. Their Engineering and Design Division engineers energy-efficient, easy-to-install-and-use digital lighting control solutions for commercial buildings, campuses, and sports complexes throughout North America. Products include relay panels, controllers, occupancy vacancy sensors, daylight sensors, and wall switch stations. And their last division is Ozop Capital Partners. This is an EV insurance company. They are a licensed reinsurance company that markets and distributes a vehicle service contract for electric vehicle market, focusing on battery replacement, repair, and roadside assistant products. So if it's got to do with energy, they're doing it. So what was the relative volume around the company today? That's nice. Going from 14 million up to 25 million. Nice jump. Share structure for OZSC. Oh, oh, oh God, was not expecting that. Whew. All right, outstanding share count is 5.1 billion shares. And unrestricted shares, which is the float, virtually the same. 5 billion shares. It's awfully, awfully high, folks. Financials for OZOP. What do we got here? Well, four years ago, they were barely on the board with just under a half a million dollars. We know that's a half a million because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And from there, they have been growing. They jumped up to 1.4, then really kicked it up to 10.5, and now have jumped up to 16.6 .6 million. And their profits are finally starting to catch up. Quarterly? Oh, that's not as good. <laughs> a year ago, they were at 4.7 million, pushed it up to 5 million at the end of 2022, and have fallen back to 1.2 million. And they're having problems right now currently. I don't know exactly what it is, but you can see here by the profit margin, they're doing some tweaking. All right, let's take a look at those disclosures. 
We have got one disclosure here, the most recent financial, the 10Q, that came out August 14th for the period of June. If you're really interested in the company, don't go running over to Google doing searches. You're gonna waste a lot of time and effort. Just jump into a 10Q or 10K. They have everything on the company from the day they incorporated and came on the market. All right, so let's take a look at that news now. So I have gone back here to August. I want you to remember that. All of this news is from August forward, and it's all good news. Ozop Energy Solutions vehicle service contracts include nationwide roadside mobile charging network. The company signs an agent agreement with Caltex Protective Coatings. The company completes phase one of prototype for new lighting control system. In October, the company to offer groundbreaking off-grid electric vehicle charging solutions. And then the big news that came out today. Ozop Energy Solutions engaged in a multi-million dollar lighting controls project at an international bank in New York City. Ozop Energy Solutions is in the critical phase of commissioning a vast five-floor lighting controls project at a renowned international bank's New York City location. The project encompasses the deployment and programming of state-of-the-art power over Ethernet based lighting system a hallmark of modern energy efficient and smart technology applications in a large commercial space. Brian Conaway, the CEO, says we are proud to play a pivotal role in this significant project, which includes approximately $8 million of high-end lighting and controls. Now, I don't know exactly what the deal is worth, $8 million worth of lighting and controls. So we're looking at at least $8 million. Well, what was their revenues last year? $16 million. So this one deal appears to be half of all of their annual revenues last year. That is a big deal. And they're doing a lot of things right now. It's just a shame the chart hasn't been reflecting it until this piece of news came out. She's had no life. Let's go take a look at it. So let's chart this little baby. This is Ozop Energy Solutions, ticker OZSC. And we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade, and that didn't cost me anything either. So we are looking at a six-month, four-hour chart. Six months ago, in February, we had a high just under a penny of 0097. And then we had a 52-week low here in October of 0018. Now, we have been here before. That's what this blue line tells me. We were here March 17th when she was roughly 0068. She has fallen lower than that, and she's been higher than that. Now, this area right here, she started to fall away. I was curious to know why. Well, there was some filings a ways back where they were talking about a public offering. <laughs> well, that's why she started to fall. This big drop, you want to guess what happened? Right, the public offering for 700 million shares. Now, they've already got 5.1 billion in the outstanding share count. Let's just round that 700 million up to a billion to make the math easy. That is 20% of the outstanding share count. It has diluted the shares now by 20%. So we can expect the price to fall 20%. Well, here at the top, we are at 0074. So 20% of that would be roughly 13, 14. So she'd fall down to 60. She didn't. She fell all the way down to 0055. She did come back up to the 200, looked like she was trying to climb, and then here on August 2nd, she fell away, all the way down to that low bubble. All the news we looked at was from August till now. There was lots of good news in here, and that's probably what these green bars are, jumps on the good news, but they didn't hold their gains. Why? I don't see anything wrong with this company. I think once she broke the 200, people just got scared and she fell too, too low. And right now she is bouncing off of that 52 week low. Lots of excitement in that recovery bar right there, going all the way up to the 50, lots of volume, coming back down, landing on the nine day SMA and pushing towards that 50. Our oscillators say she's trying to break through. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is trying to cross the pink line. It is pushing up. Our MACD is pushing up, trying to get over the signal line. We'll get more strength when she does. And our RSI 
is a bit tempted right now. She's down at 51. I don't like to see it any less than 55. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we're on a downtrend. Our high here from 0038 down to that low. A wicked turnaround. Boy, a nice strong jump. Shows a lot of initiative here. She got right up underneath that 200. Fell back down to her 20, mind you, not the 50, the 20. It's not as heavy as you think. And she is climbing on that 20 towards the 200. All of our SMAs are now turned up. Oscillators, not very strong at the very moment. PPO is going sideways. MACD has had a crossover downward. And our RSI is climbing. We've got some mixed signals here. And our five-day, five-minute. Okay, there's that drop to that 52-week low. The whole day she stuck it out down there and then ripped the next day. Hitting this high of 003, falling back to our 50, going sideways and dropping all the way back down to the 200. She's now bouncing off of the 200. She is stuck right now between the 200 and the 50. Looks like her oscillators are pushing up right now. This looks like she has the the will to rise. Everything is a bit weak right now. You know, she's been falling for a long time. It's going to take some strength to start to push up, but she's got big news. This contract looks like it's at least half of last year's annual revenues. That is a big deal. OZSC, it isn't going to hurt you to put it on your watch list. Go on. Our next top penny stock comes from the major exchange. This is Nanolabs, ticker NA. Nah. <laughs> now, I would describe her chart as being a soft atypical breakout chart. She is breaking out so easy and gently right now that it could easily go unnoticed, except for the fact that her price is on top of every SMA and still rising. Now, this is a Chinese company. I know that for a lot of reasons, but at first glance, I see an 86 over here in the prefix of the phone number. In America, we dial a 1. In China, they dial an 86. Well, this Chinese company just came out with new technology and they exhibited it at their, call it the Chinese Olympics, and it took off like wildfire. And I think this new technology could spread around the world just as fast. So, nah, finished the day at $1.41 with just over 11% gains. She's on the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. You can trade it pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. Now, for the life of me, I have no clue why it says Shell Company over here. Shell Company means they're not in business. They're not making any revenues. Oh, this company's making lots of revenues. So, what does this company do? Well, they tell us over here that Nano Labs is a leading fabless integrated circuit design company and a product solution provider in China. Nano Labs is committed to the development of high thoroughput computing chips, HTC, High Performance Computing Chips, HPC, Distributed Computing and Storage Solutions, Smart Network Interface Cards, called NICs, Vision Computing Chips, and Distributed Renderings. Nano Labs has built a comprehensive flow processing unit architecture, which offers solutions that integrate the features of both HTC and HPC. NanoLab's Cuckoo series are one of the first near-memory HTC chips available in the market with a maximum bandwidth of approximately 2.3 terabytes per second. Oh my God, is that fast. As well as one of the first movers of the ASIC-based grin mining market. No clue what that means. <laughs> so what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, that's not looking bad. We've got almost 100% increase on low numbers, jumping from 42,000 shares up to 82,000 shares. Share structure for Nano Labs. All right, you got to love these Chinese companies because you rarely see one with a ton of shares. A lot of them have low floats right from the get-go. This one, outstanding shares, about 27 million. They don't tell us what the float is. It's not going to be any higher than $27 million, And being a Chinese company, it could be considerably less. Market cap for this company, $17.2 million. Taking a look at those financials for this shell company. Yeah, right. Chips are big business. 
Back in 2020, the company only did $325,000 with a business. Look at the next year, jumped to 6 million. But look at 2022, from 6 million to 141 million. Business is booming. Problem is they got to put out a lot of money to make these chips. We ended up with 33 million out of that 141 million. But that's a lot more profit than they've ever had before. Quarterly, don't give us anything. So let's jump into that balance sheet. What do we got in the bank? We got about $12.5 million in the bank, $15 million in inventory, add up all their assets, total of about $53 million. All their liabilities together is about $30 million, which leaves shareholder equity of about $16.6 million. Positive. That's a good thing. Definitely not a shell company. Disclosures for the company. We've got two 6Ks over here. One of these 6Ks has to do with a shareholder meeting. Uh, that is going to be on December 1st. And the other 6K correlates to news. Actually, both of these correlate to news. There's that meeting on December 1st. This is the other 6K, which we're going to take a look at. And this is a piece of news that's worthy of knowing. They did a debt conversion. They owed somebody $10 million. Well, rather than pay them money, they paid them in shares and they're happy with it. So they have taken the debt away and put it into the pot for investments. The only bad thing about that is that they gave the shares to them at half price, half price, but they took care of a $10 million debt. That's good for us. And this piece of news is the big piece of news. Nano Labs launches Apollo Metaverse Photography Studio Service. They tell us here that the company announced the introduction of a new photography studio service within its iPolo Metaverse business segment. The new service, which merges 3D scanning and printing services, aims to offer innovative experiences in digital avatar collection and creation of lifelike 3D figures. During the 2023 Hanju Asian Games, a quadrino multi-sport event featuring athletes from across Asia, the new service catered to over 5,000 athletes and garnered attention and media coverage from numerous outlets, establishing it as a popular destination within the Asian Games. The new service featuring an image scanning cabin adeptly captures athletes' memorable moments. What we're talking about is you stand inside this capsule and it takes a picture of you, color and everything, and then a 3D printer makes a little figurine of you right there. This has been hot. Moreover, the company wants us to know that they have successfully initiated the tape out of Cuckoo 3. They were only on Cuckoo 2 before. The third iteration of the Nano Labs Cuckoo series, marking a significant advancement in the development of the company's Cuckoo series. Isn't this the one that was doing 2.3 terabytes per second? That was version two. God, how fast is version three? So that's what you got going on here, folks. It's a new technology that makes figures. Take a picture of yourself. This is going to be at carnivals. I can see it at carnivals. You're going to walk into a box. They're going to take a picture and you're going to walk out with a little toy of yourself. Isn't that neat? Let's go take a look at this chart. We're taking a look at, nah, this is Nano Labs six month, four hour view. It was in May. We got our low bubble of 97 cents. Also in May, following the low came our high of $4.79. And this was a nice rip. She went from a buck 30 all the way up to $4.79 in one day. And I have no clue what did this. But it was short lived, came down, went sideways. When it hit the 50, we got another good bounce off of it. And then it just crashed. And right now, we have got that nice and easy gentle breakout just rolling across the 200. Everything has rolled across the 200. Every single SMA, okay, we got a smidge more to go on the 200 haul, but every other SMA is over the 200, including the price, which is over top of all the SMAs. That is a perfect atypical breakout setup. Our oscillators, we got a bounce off of the pink line with our PPO and it's pushing up. We just had a crossover in our MACD. It too is pushing up. But our RSI is falling just a wee bit, but she is still above 55 at 56. All we're missing here is some volume, even though it jumped 100% today. 
looking at our 20 day one hour view. Woo, look at those rolls and bounces here. She is rolling across the 50 day SMA here, bouncing between 15 and 20 cents. So depending how many shares you had, you could sell at the top, buy at the bottom, sell at the top, buy at the bottom, back and forth. She broke away from that pattern after hitting this high, came back down to the 200, smacked that hard and bounced off of it, went back up over top of that 50 day SMA and looks like she's climbing again. Oscillator, she is doing just that. PPO is pushing up, MACD is pushing up, and our RSI, it's just going sideways, but it's not falling. And you can definitely see our 200-day SMA is on an uptrend right now. Five-day, five-minute view. All right, let's squeeze this up a little bit. All right, she's going sideways. That's all she's doing. We had a low, we had a high, and there's about... 15 cents between there. And our 200 day SMA just came into the picture here. I do see our 50 day SMA is starting to push up just right now. She was on an uptrend, leveled out when the 200 came around, and now she's starting to push away, as are all the other SMAs. And the price is also pushing up. Our oscillators, uh, I mean, just this much. They are pushing up. They are just barely getting going. <sighs> Blow on that thing and get that fire going. Honestly, I do like this company. They're making good money. The money is growing at leaps and bounds. And now they got this technology where you can make these little figurines of whoever. You just step into the box, let the thing take a 3D picture of you, and then it prints it out. So I like NA, folks. Put it on your watch list. I'm sure you've got room over there for it. Got another major exchange hot penny stock. This is Yash, ticker Y-O-S-H, Yashihiru Global. We're going to stick with Yash. Yash has got an atypical breakout chart that she's breaking out of right now. The chart looks great. And the company has just come out telling us that they are making a nice acquisition of property in Las Vegas. This is a Japanese restaurant. Did you know that Las Vegas gets about a million tourists a week? A week? You're talking about 52 million people coming through your city a year. That is a steady line of business. And that's where he has got multiple establishments he is getting hold of. So Yash finished today at just about 57 and a half cents and just over 22% gains. And of course, she too is on the NASDAQ. Seems I really like these stocks. So what is Yash about? Well, they tell us that Yashu Heruru <laughs> is a fast growing <laughs> restaurant operator and was born out of the idea of introducing the modernized Japanese dining experience to customers all over the world, specializing in Japanese ramen. The company gained recognition as a leading ramen restaurant in Southern California within six months of its 2016 debut and has continued to expand its top-notch restaurant services across Southern California, currently owning and operating nine restaurants. So what was the relative volume for today? Oh man, I don't normally splice, but I had to take a break there. I was laughing way too hard and started drooling, and we can't have that in any videos. So what was the company's relative volume today? Impressive. Jumping about, uh, I don't know, five, five times their normal volume, going from 150,000 up to 1.3 million. Share structure for Yash. That's looking pretty good too. Outstanding share count is just about 12 million. Don't know what the float is, but if the float was 12 million, I'd be happy. But chances are it's gonna be less. Better yet. Financials for Yash. Now they said they debuted the company in 2016, so we're looking at three years after he debuted. He did four million in that year, 2019. 2021, they added up to six million. 2022, we're up to 8.2 million. But he gads, look what he pays out of all of that. Out of 8.2 million, he only gets to keep $166,000. He's gonna have to tweak that formula. I don't think he should fire anybody. You'd have to hire robots then to serve us food in the restaurants. I don't think anybody wants that. Quarterly, well now things are looking better. 
year ago we were under 2 million for two quarters got it up over that to 2.5 million and we've dipped a little but we're still holding over 2 million and she is bringing in profits what's the balance sheet on this all right in the bank we got 3.3 million total assets 14 million total liabilities 10.5 million that leaves us positive 3.4 million shareholder equity Woohoo! we do like shareholder equity disclosures yeah we've got a form four here you need to see i'm going to be sharing a piece of news with you here and this form four came out a couple days after this piece of news this is whenever an insider acquires or disposes of shares of the company stock and we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them well this is a purchase see the big p right there purchase they acquired them he got 50,000 shares at 43 cents this is the ceo and chairman james che i've been reading a lot about him here recently matter of fact let's go take a look at that news right now so there's only really two pieces of news that we need to take a look at i'm only going to look at one this one's self-explanatory the company authorizes a 1 million share repurchase program that was at the start of september then we had a piece of news come out 9 11. I know it's kind of old, but the chart is set up right now, and this is what is happening right now. September 11th, the company entered into a non-binding memorandum of understanding with a restaurant operator to acquire three restaurants, Zhanga, HJH, and Ramen Haku, all located in Las Vegas, Nevada. These three acquisitions of restaurants across Las Vegas are part of the company's expansion plan that expects to see 13 operating restaurants by the end of the year, with an annual gross revenue from the acquired restaurants exceeding $6 million and a healthy profit margin. Now, if I'm reading this right, he's talking about 13 restaurants in Las Vegas, and we just read they've got nine in California, and they're going to be bringing in $6 million. What was the revenues we were looking at over here for the annuals? Annual, we were at eight. Last year, we or two years ago, we were at six. And they're going to add that on top of what they're doing. So that's some serious growth right there. With an annual gross revenue from the acquired restaurants exceeding six million and a healthy profit margin. I've said it twice because it's worthy of listening to. That really is the catalyst. And I know it's months ago, but we haven't had a letter of closing. Now, if this was a pink on the OTC, I probably would not have even gone here because there's a lot of ifs, ands, and buts. This is a non-binding memorandum of understanding. I could express that as being coffee at Starbucks, two people talking. That's it. That's what that could be. On the pinks, they'll use that as a real big pump to get a stock going and then say, the deal fell through, we're sorry, after the stock ran. Being on the NASDAQ, they are, let's just say, they're held to what they say more. So that's what we got going here, and the chart is breaking out right now. Let's go take a look at it. We're looking at Yash, ticker Y-O-S-H, and I don't need to say the name of the company. You know who we're talking about. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We have got our high bubble back in February of $2.58, a big strong spike. Looks like her high was closer to about $2.22, but it was short lived. She came down underneath this 200 and she has been falling for a long time. She did have a nice jump here, going from 67 cents up to a buck 50. That is about 150% gains. Then we had another bounce here. This is about an 80% run. This is about a 75% run. And they're all pushing towards that 200. You can see she has enthusiasm. She is looking for an opportunity. Now, the only thing we didn't have here, right, who said that? My directional intentional spike. One big spike going all the way through. But you don't absolutely have to have it. That's just something that is a giveaway that is probably, probably going to happen. But this is happening. She has worked her way right up to there, and she has broke out today. She had a nice, nice spike. She jumped here from at the end of the day, mind you. This was at the end of the day, not the beginning. She went from 45 cents all the way up to 77 cents. Maybe 80% jump like these over here. She did come all the way back down, landed smack on top of that nine-day SMA, 
on top of the 200. And here comes the boost. This 20 day, 50 day, gonna cross that 200. Those are golden crosses. We can expect some extra heat on the chart when those happen. Oscillators, they were hot, they've cooled down, but they're not cold, they're just holding out right now. Except for our RSI, it has fallen a lot. But then of course it did, that was a big drop and your RSI is nothing more than a price line. Change all these bars into a line, that's what the line would look like. That's why people get excited when they see the RSI going up. Looking at that 20 day, one hour view. Not a whole lot was going on. She was slowly working her way up. You can see that this 200 haul and this 50 are crossing the 200 here. Got across that, we had a dip in the price, but look at all of our SMAs. They've just all taken stronger turn up. Even though this is falling, this has landed on the new higher ground. It's not down here at the low spot, it's at the new higher ground, a good place to bounce. Oscillators are definitely cooling off with that drop. That was a big drop right there. So our PPO has fallen, our MACD has had a crossover, and our RSI is falling. Five day, five minute. So for most of the week, she wasn't doing anything. She was hanging around this 50 day SMA. She got a nice push off of that, which lifted the 50 day. She came down to her new high on her 50 and rolled that all the way here. And then something happened here at the very end of the day. I don't know, I didn't have my video out yet. So I don't think it was that. But this is when we had that jump from 56 cents to 78 cents and it came back down. I love a stock that has these pounces and jumps. You know, sometimes it behooves you to put in a sell order. You're just moseying along here, minding your own business. You never know when one of these big pops are gonna come in. So what if you're down here at uh, 45 cents and that's up there at 77? So what if you said 70? Well, if this hit 70 cents, I'd sell it because it doesn't stay, right? It doesn't stay, it comes back down. And you're not gonna catch it when it pops. It would have to be an automatic sell. So it would pop, ding, you'd hear it and go, what was that? You'd see you had money. Then you'd come back over and it had already fallen and come back down and you could buy back in cheap after that sale and you have extra money left over. Ideal stocks. I really do love these. She is sitting on top of her 200 right now, bouncing on it. Boing, boing, boing. Doesn't look like she's going to go too far. It's brand new. It just came into the picture. I expect the price to come to the new SMA. I'd keep my eye on this wait for the next press release. I'm not saying pour a ton of money into it. Maybe get a starter position right now. But looking at that four hour chart, you can't tell me that doesn't look like it's ready to take off. <laughs> all right, I've given you three nice stocks today, folks. But of course, I did not cover all the information. So don't go investing based on everything I said. I've only told you enough to get your interest, to show you the potential. You go do the serious DD. You've got time. I did all of this in just a matter of hours and had to do this as well. You just have to read. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.